What's up guys, my name is Technobo and today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own web server from your own PC or a laptop or something like that running Windows. Of course this is available for Mac and Linux as well I'm pretty sure, but this guide will be specifically for Windows and most of the settings and things should carry across to those other platforms. That being said, I would highly recommend you actually use a proper web host, you pay for one, because that will be running 24-7, you don't need to keep your computer up, and you don't need to worry specifically about DDoS attacks and the rest of knocking off your home connection and messing with your other business parts. Basically in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can set up a XAMPP, XAMPP server on your Windows computer and get it working with that. So you'll have access to PHP, the actual file web hosting, as well as an SQL database if you'd like to see how to set that up, which will be linked in a video down in the description below, as well as how to use that. But this one's mainly going to focus on the file hosting slash PHP side with XAMPP. So what exactly is XAMPP? Well, it's actually a pretty popular hosting platform to which the download is linked below. It's created by Apache Friends, which is basically the Apache group, and it contains Apache MariaDB, which is the SQL database, PHP and Perl. However, today I'm going to mainly cover Apache, which is your file hosting, as well as PHP, which comes with it. So after heading across to the link in the description down below, which is apachefriends.org slash index, you're going to want to hit the download is AMP for Windows button, or of course, Linux or OS X. But I'll be clicking the XAMPP for Windows button, because I'm running Windows. After you click the download link, you'll get to a page like this, to which you can close, and after the download has finished, you can click to open it up, and you can close this main page as well. After opening the installer, you'll get a pop-up like this, asking for you to pause your antivirus during the installation, as it may slow things down or interfere with the software. Why exactly do they say this? Well, it's because they're going to be copying tons and tons of tiny little files onto your computer, inside of the specific folder that you specify, and if you have an antivirus on, it may take a while to check each and every individual file. However, I'm pretty sure that ESET, my current antivirus, doesn't slow it down that much, and I haven't had issues in the past, so I'm going to hit yes to continue. Now, of course, it says that your PC is protected by UAC, and some functions of XAMPP are possibly restricted. They say, with UAC, please avoid installation to C program files, because you'll need write permissions for that, or deactivate UAC with msconfig, which I wouldn't specifically recommend if you use this computer for other things. So I'll simply be installing it to C slash XAMPP, instead of program files, etc, etc. This is usually where people drop it. So on this next screen, you're able to choose what exactly you want to install. Apache, Tomcat and Mercury are for emails. We'll make sure that the FileZilla FTP server is off because I have local file access to this computer. Of course, if you're installing this on a web server, having an FTP server is rather quite useful. You should have this ticked if you're not going to have physical access to this computer and use that as a main way of putting files on and off. Obviously, if you tick this, you'll have to go through the FTP setup. I'm pretty sure I've done a video on before, so if you have this checked, make sure to check the description as well for a video on that, which will be titled something like FileZilla FTP Server. I'm going to have Apache ticked because you can't uncheck it, and SQL because I'll be going through an SQL tutorial later on. Down here we have PHP and Perl. Perl is optional, but I'll leave that checked for now. And down here at the very bottom we have phpMyAdmin, which is an interface for your SQL database. Webalizer, which is used for statistics and logs, so I'll leave that on. And fake send mail, which I'm pretty sure sends mail to your own computer. However, I'm not exactly sure what these last two are. So I'll just disable the send mail and I'll leave a webalizer there as well. I'll hit next and I'll choose to install it to C slash XAMPP. This is its default installation folder. After hitting next, if you get a pop up like this, that means you already have XAMPP installed. Of course I do, so I'm going to go ahead and move it. Right, once I've done that, I'll hit next. I'll uncheck this learn more because it opens a web page after the installation. Next, next, and now we just need to simply wait for the installation to complete. After the installation completes, I'll make sure that do you want to start the control panel now is checked, and I'll hit finish. Then you get to choose between English and German. Of course, I'll be picking English, and I'll click save. Then you'll have the XAMPP control panel open up. So what exactly is this? Well, this is where you start and stop each and every service for your web server. On the right hand side, we have a config, which brings up information about our XAMPP installation. Our default editor is set to notepad.exe. However, if you have notepad++, I'd recommend changing it to that exe. 
So I'll navigate to C program files 86, notepad plus plus, and I'll select notepad plus plus dot exe. Browser, I'll leave a system default. So if you have Chrome, Firefox, etc., etc., that'll open up. And down here, we get to choose what starts with XAMPP if you want to choose any of these. Of course, I'll leave them all off because if XAMPP starts with Windows, I'll rather be able to start these individually. Then we can go ahead and click Service and Port Settings, which will open up this window over here. Now, this window is incredibly important if you want to have your XAMPP server accessible by the internet. Choosing a main port and an SSL port here is quite important. You'll need to make sure that you port forward these ports to your computer from your router so that your website is publicly accessible. Same goes for your SQL database, FileZilla, Mercury, and Tomcat. However, I'll leave everything as default because I won't be accessing this through the outside internet. Now, that being said, I also won't be running through setting up a DNS, etc., etc., for a website such as tcno.co and pointing it to your local computer through the internet because that is quite an in depth process. And I'd rather go through that in another video. This is just setting up a local file sharing server that works sort of like a website on your own PC for experimenting, testing, and you can test it over your local network as well. I'll go ahead and hit save, and now we're basically done. Netstat gives you information on everything running on your computer right now. Shell gives you shell access to XAMPP. However, I won't be using this. Explorer lets you explore the C slash XAMPP folder, which you could simply open up manually. Then we also have services over here, which opens up services.msc. Then we also have help and quit, which obviously I won't be clicking. Next up, I'll be clicking the config button next to Apache, so we can go ahead and configure our Apache server. Now here are the files that you can go ahead and configure. httpd.conf, ssl.conf, zamp.conf, php.ini, and config-inc.php, which is for your PHP MyAdmin. We can also browse the Apache folder, PHP, and PHP MyAdmin. Opening up http.conf, we get to configure our HTTP server. As you can see, the default server root is C Zamp Apache, which is where Apache has been installed. And down here, we get into some more in-depth options where you can load custom modules, enable or disable them as we're going. However, I won't be covering anything else in this folder until maybe another video. And at the very top, I head across to localhost slash applications.html. You can see that we're inside of applications.html. If we head across to simply localhost, we'll see the index.php page. We can also do things like access favicon.ico. And as you can see, we're basically exploring this folder over here as if it was a website. And that's what this Apache server does. And that is how it would work if you had it set up to work with the internet. Now, just let it be known, there is no way to get back out of this htdocs folder unless there's some sort of vulnerability in Apache, which I don't think there's been for quite a while. If we try and go back a folder, it won't work. This is the base and this is as low as you can get accessing it from a browser. So everything before this folder is probably fine to store things in and use. htdocs is the only part that's visible to the internet with your Apache server on as far as I know. That being said, if you want to create and work on your own projects, here is a great place to dump them to test things out. A quick example would be a local copy of my website. If I go ahead and open up an index page, you can see it is completely white and it's waiting for things like Steam Signature to respond, which they probably won't because opening it from my local file system isn't really a real website. That being said, if we close out of it, and if I were to copy everything that I need from this folder into our htdocs folder, it would work as if it was a legitimate website. Into something like temp, you'll see that things should work a little bit more predictably. So there we have a localhost temp index.html. Obviously, a couple of things are missing, but it's working a lot better than having it just as a file. Now, of course, I'm sure that I could go ahead and figure out exactly what I'm missing and add them to the server. As you can see, I'm missing a slash image. So I could go ahead and copy that across, refresh the page, and you'll see things would load a lot better, much like my actual official website at tcno.co. So obviously, there's a couple of differences, but it's working basically like a normal web host. And that's that. If you want to set up downloads, you can simply copy files into this htdocs folder and they'll be accessible through the internet as normal downloads. So say that I make a new text file, I just call it test.txt. 
I can head back into my browser, localhost slash test dot text. You can see that it opens up. However, it's empty. And of course, text is a recognized file format. I'll name this something different like bin to force it to download. So I'll download test.bin. And as you can see, it downloads like a normal file. If I were to compare these two, they'd be exactly the same. I literally just downloaded this text file that I renamed over here. And as you can see, it's basically a fully functional fledged out Apache server hosted on your local PC. Of course, if you want other computers on your local network to access your PC, you'd open up command prompts, start R CMD, and you'd type in ipconfig, you'd grab your local IP, and you'd enter this on another computer on the same local network, assuming that you've turned off your firewall or at least allowed these ports through it. After doing that, you'll see that you basically have a full file slash web server running on your computer. So if you'd like to know about how to set up a SQL database and things like that, make sure to check the description down below if I've uploaded those videos. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot. I hope this video helped you and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.